I told him that those documents are legitimate. But look, check the cameras, the logs, everything. There's no trace of a breach. I don't know if you're hurt, sir, but... Commissioner Gordon is here. Thank you, Aubrey. I don't know why he went back to that hideout. We cleared the site after Crane died. They didn't get everything. Welcome, Batman Red Fist fans. I'm Matt Kohler, creator of Batman Master of Fear, here to show you one of the biggest challenges we had on set, creating the Batcave. We didn't want to use a green screen. We wanted to actually make a practical set for all the actors and for myself and for you guys too. And so we're going to show you one of the biggest problems on set. Take a look. So in 2018, Richie Watkins and myself moved down to Atlanta, Georgia. And at the time, we didn't have a lot of money for the budget, and we didn't know anywhere that we could film on location for the Batcave. And that makes it really hard to do anything with that because we didn't know anywhere and we had little to no money. So we decided instead we were gonna build it right inside our apartment. We didn't have a lot in our apartment, so it made it a little bit easier to make the Batcave inside our house. So we started crowdfunding in 2018 and we both thought, how do we budget a bat cave? We didn't want to green screen it because it, we thought it'd be better for the actors and also we wanted to build a bat cave. We thought it'd be a lot of fun, a very you know big challenge for Red Fist and myself. So that is when we realized how screwed we were when we didn't have a lot of money. And so we started thinking, well, what are we gonna do? So Richie and myself started researching on many different things online and we found out for some odd reason, butcher paper. Butcher paper was the key to making the bat cave. Doesn't cost a lot, uh, $60 I think it took, and we butcher paper our entire wall. Now how we did that was we folded it up, we creased it, we watered it to make it look like it was rock. Now, the only thing that was missing was creating that depth of field. Now what we did with that was we sprayed oil. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are happening today I never thought was going to happen, like spraying cooking spray on my walls. <laughs> which you're probably thinking is a fire hazard, which probably was, but luckily nothing happened. The good news is we've then had the material to create the bat cave. Now the next big challenge was, was living in it for a month before shooting. So it was claustrophobic. There was not a lot that you could do. There was not a lot of space. And the worst part of it was, was at a certain point, we had to wrap the walls, the walls leading to the door, the exit. And so now we had to crawl underneath in order to get out of our own apartment. So it was becoming, uh, what's the word? Uh, a pain to live inside the bat cave. Fuck me. Now it was time for filming. So a month after, the actors came in and they were shocked. They were surprised. The fact that we actually made a bat cave inside our home. At first, you will see some pictures. They did not look good. You're probably thinking, how the hell did it get from this to that? Well, it took a lot of work. It wasn't just the set around. We had to have really good lights to make it look a little futuristic, get that fog, that mist, that atmosphere to really amp up the look because it wasn't gonna take one thing. It had to be everything, including the actors, to buy into that this was the Batcave. And that is a really hard thing to do unless everyone is on board with this idea that this is the Batcave. You get to run around and play and drive the neat things and I sit in the cave in the dark bat shit on my clothes. So the biggest challenge is obviously it was a small room. After all, it was an apartment. We had nine people on set. We had six crew members and we had three actors. And the biggest problem was we didn't have a lot of space to do anything. We could barely move lights. We could barely move the camera. And so when you see the bat cave, you'll only see it in a few different angles. And that was because we couldn't show anymore. Otherwise, you will probably see someone sleeping. Definitely the most unique experience we had had at that time. I mean, we had done some pretty unique things up to that point, but I think what set this apart is definitely the most claustrophobic we had been. I mean, it probably wouldn't have been as claustrophobic if we wouldn't have had almost 10 people on set. We had an audio guy who was pretty well just crammed into a corner near the window. If he held his arms out just like an inch too much, 
the boom would be in the shot. Like, that's just how compact all the actors and crew were. The rule was, if you were sitting on the futon, uh, actually up against this wall, um, then you could move around. But even then, you had to make sure you didn't, like, trip over the people's feet sitting next to you. And, but really, if you were out uh, in the filming area, I mean, you'll see minimal camera movement. You might see a little bit of a pan, but we weren't able to do, like, all this, all these different steady cam movement shots that you see, like, in the first fight scene. So, let's see, we had Ben Kearns. He was in for both days, so we didn't feel as rushed with getting his scenes done. Rick was in for both days as well. Really, the rush was with, of course, the the main character, Bruce, Chris Johnson. The same day that he came in to film was also the day that um, we had to get him back to the airport. Three. Thankfully, we were working with professional act, literally professional veteran actors trained in theater, which I think is the the best case scenario for when they have a lot of dialogue that they need to have memorized and have very well informed characters that they can bring to set. This is where I spend a lot of my time in the kitchen, preparing things for Bruce and his favorite mug, and he likes Jack. And then coming this way, and this is where I spend the rest of my time. I'm in the back cave. But let me tell you, we do have modern conveniences because every once in a while, I catch myself having to go to the bathroom. So there you have it, it's real. We have the bathroom, we have the back cave, and then we have my kitchen. All in one location. This is truly a wonderful world. <laughs> I just love it. It's, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. Told you. <laughs> it was really interesting how there was, it was like there was three different layers to watching all three different actors work because obviously you'd have them doing the scenes together. More good news. Where are we on the assistants? Alfred and I managed to locate two of them, both the seats. We were looking for any link between assistant R and Jonathan Crane's known associates. The sooner we can find that link, the sooner we can find the next one. Another layer was when it would stop rolling, they would stay halfway in character, and you could see them like transitioning. You could see them transitioning back to themselves, and they would be conversing with themselves, like sort of in character. You know how close Catwoman and I have been? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She lacks. Mine. More than she likes. Your bat wing? My bat wing? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been accused of having a bat wang. You hang out with Batman long enough, everybody gets a bat wang. Mm. Well, <laughs> well, that explains the Joker. <laughs> Joker? Yeah, I guess. Nowhere. Hey! Put the smile on his face. <laughs> It was really cool to see that because you could see, you know, they have these professional actors that were serious about their craft, but they also knew the right beats of when to just have fun. And then if it would take a little bit extra time for the next setup, then they knew to just go back to themselves and it's like, okay, this is Chris, this is Rick, this is Ben. And they would just keep up that, that prop, that, that flow. So when I saw the scene between Bruce and, and Alfred, fully edited, and honestly when I even saw it being shot on set, I could fully see the, the father-son type relationship that Alfred and Bruce actually have. This is a scene where Alfred is basically pleading with Bruce to save his own life. Rick brings such a fatherly presence and, and tone to his pleas. But at the same time, he knows that in the end, he's still not his father, and Bruce is his own man. And so, Will you help at the end of the day, Bruce is going to set out and do what he's going to do. In one way, it's heart-wrenching to watch that scene, because he's really trying to break through to him, but at the end, when he says, anything for you, Master Wayne, 
suddenly he's snapped back from trying to play the father role and uh, basically just realizing, okay, I'll play butler, but you're going to learn. So now you've seen one of the hardest parts of Batman Master of Fear, the Batcave. And next video, we will show you the other part, which was the fight scene, getting Batman and Nightmare ready for action. So stay tuned and get ready to see that and Master of Fear. Thank you.